it's Anne from the Useless Crafter. So this came as a special request for a Monsters Inc. party. And so um, I had just done a video on this guy, Mike, and made him, so I sized these characters be, for them to be together as a group. So as a group, um, you're gonna have different sizes based on the actual cartoon, right? So um, what I did was sh I made her 14 inches, him 16 inches and him 27 inches and the way I arrived at all that is because I looked to see where my problem areas problem areas are gonna were gonna be and it was going to be his big belly because I could mess around with things up here like adding the balloons so I sized it as big as I could where his belly was gonna be seamless because it's just it's so blank it's just a big blue piece and I knew with that color, I wouldn't even have glitter cardstock to help me because I don't have it in that color. It was going to be regular cardstock. So I made it so that this was going to be 11 and a half inches and then I can deal with everything else. So when I made him 27 inches, it looked about good for him to be 16 inches and for her to be 14 inches. All right, so what we're gonna do though is we're gonna ignore all this. I'm gonna delete all of that and we're not gonna make it part of a trio, but as we normally would, where we wanna make her about 30 inches. So what we're gonna do is, first you're gonna find the file, go into images, and you can just search Monsters, Inc. And when I'm in here, I still, you know, like with the word monster, it's still popping up a lot of other things. I do like to go under brand and narrow down my search by clicking on Disney. So just scroll on down. And there were a few um, options for Boo. We could have done one of these, but again, it's similar to the belly, is her shirt is all one color and it's one piece. So that would really limit our size. Whereas if we went with this one, which I think is just cuter, it's got more things going on. It gives us the option of bringing in more colors. Like you're gonna have this contrast of the, the little hair versus the purple. So there are a lot of things that we can do, right? And then with the little polka dots, with um, really pretty cardstock, it'll just bring out your whole character. So that's why I selected this one. Just click on it and insert it. I already have it in there, so I'm gonna get out of it. And let me um, save this as Boo 30 inches. And I've been trying to save as I go along because ever since this last update, oh man, Design Space has been killing me. So. I apologize if I keep on saving, but it's <laughs> otherwise I get to the end and I lose the whole project. Okay, so we're gonna make it 30 inches. So go to height and we're just gonna type in 30. Your width is going to adjust accordingly because our um, image is locked. So that means it's going to change it proportionately. Okay, so at 30 inches, the main thing that I'm concerned with is her face because the face, I almost always use a regular cardstock. So 65 pound cardstock, it will show every seam. And of course you're drawn to the face, right? It's right up front and center. So I always make sure that no matter what the size is, my face is going to be seamless. In this case, her face is tiny, so it should be fine. So what you would do is you would ungroup this and let's look at the face. So the face is, um, 8.4 inches by 7 inches perfect. Let's see how big this piece is. So this piece is going to be big, but I liked this purple because if you could see, even though it's one big, it's, you know, her whole costume, right? But it's broken up into pieces. So the antenna is its own piece. The hat is its own piece. And even down here, while it is one big piece, we can easily make it multiple pieces. We can drag out these black lines and make it a deliberate cut. So not a seam, but you know, but um, ooh, I don't even know how to explain it, but basically just extend this black line over so that we would have a top part. And then if we did that, I don't even know if we need to break these up into sections, but 
that's what that's what I would do but let's start working on this file and see okay so let me move this up just a little bit all right so let's start pulling apart these pieces okay so here oh my gosh let's look at this for a second here is all the white okay so this is what I would do. Do you see how it's a bazillion pieces, these little dots? I am tempted to make the dots just go underneath like this arm. See how it's light purple? I would duplicate that piece, hide all, and change that to white so that it's a big piece, so that I'm not dealing with little dots. Okay, so what I'm I will show you in a second. Oh, you know what? Let's do this one first. Okay. So let me, let's separate this, right? Let's slice out these pieces so they're their own individual pieces. And so let's do, let's bring in a square and we're going to slice out, excuse me, something just fell into my throat. Okay. We're going to slice out one piece at a time. So let's cover this bottom piece right here. And I'm gonna go in from this side and slice out that piece. And remember when we're slicing, you can only slice two items at one time. So I'm slicing the light purple and the square. So we're gonna get this piece right here. We don't need the slice result, so you can just delete that. But now this piece is its own little piece, right? This is what I would wanna do. I wanna duplicate this. Okay, and then I'm gonna change it to white to match the polka dots, right? Okay, then go to contour and hide all. So what you're gonna have is, it, yes, you were cutting more and we're wasting a little bit more of the white paper, but instead of having to glue down or tape down each one of these dots, first of all, you need to cut it, then you need to you know, take it off your mat and then you need to tape it all down. Instead, all your white pieces would look like this. So it would be this piece, then you would put this piece arranged sent to the front. This piece would go right on top and look, it's exactly the same as if you had the dots in there. The only difference is I believe these dots are smaller. So let me move this out of the way for a second. These dots show the black a little bit, so yeah. So we're going to miss that. So it's gonna be up to you whether you like the dots or you're gonna go the easy route and just say, no thank you, I'm gonna have the white dots in there. I, it's really personal preference and because I, I'm not vested in this boo character. For me, I would do the easy route, but I can totally understand why someone would wanna do the polka dots. All right, so I said my little piece. Let's continue slicing out these other pieces, okay? So I showed you how to do one. You're gonna do them all the same if that's the route that you wanna go. If you don't wanna go that route, then we just need to slice it out because you're gonna do the white polka dots. Okay, so let's move this out of the way okay so here's our other piece and then we have just one more slicing to do we could do this move it down okay so it's right here and then grab these two items and slice all right so i'm going to delete the square because we can always bring in a new square and then here are all our light purple pieces okay I'm gonna move it over here. Okay, let's see this little mop thing. There's the white. Oops, let me move that out of the way. Let's, we'll deal with the white in a second. Okay, so let's look at our purple. Our purple is um, these two pieces, the hat, and then the body. So in this case, I would, I, mm, let's just, We'll use contour to separate out the pieces. So technically it's one, two, three, four pieces, right? So you're gonna need four total copies of this image. So here's two, three, and my fourth copy. So one image at a time, we're gonna go to contour and we're gonna separate the piece out. So hit hide all, it's gonna give us this big piece, but we do want these little guys in there. So you wanna select these 
So here is our piece. It is a little bit long, right? And a little bit wide, 11.7 by 13. So we are gonna need to slice this up a little bit. I'm tempted to slice it right here and extend this piece right here and break it up into two pieces. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, but let's do the rest of this. Let's go to contour, hide all, and we want this piece, but we don't want this piece. So now we have this guy, and this guy is fine. He's 9.7 by 9.7, we're good. And then let's go and contour, hide all. I want this piece, I don't want this piece. All right, that's gonna be a small piece, and then we need the other antenna. All right, contour, we want to hide all. We want the antenna, we don't want the body. So you're just selecting yes and no pretty much to contour out. Okay, so here's our other piece. Now this piece we need to work on because it's a little bit too big, right? So I'm gonna zoom in so we can see this a little bit better. And I'm gonna use my favorite font trick to do this because if, if it was just a straight line, then I would make a rectangle and extend it, right? But there's a slight curve to this. so. It's going to look, to me, it's gonna look obvious if we try to do a straight line here. So what I wanna do is go to text, and this is my favorite font for this. It's called I Love Glitter. If you don't already have it, um, what you wanna do is go to Defont, so D-A-F-O-N-T, and here, hold on. What am I doing? I'm. A hot mess right now. I typed this out, but what I meant to do was type it up here to find my font. So as I was saying, I love glitter. There is a glyph that is perfect for this type of thing. So you want to make sure that you're in this font, right? And it's the key to the right of the letter P. So it's a square bracket. So sorry, let me get that there. Why is it giving me the L? Hold on. What am I doing? Okay. There we go. So here's my little glyph. And see how it has that natural like little curve? So anytime that I need to slice something that has a little bit of a curve, I use this glyph. And I'm gonna show you right now why it's worth doing. So let's go back over here. Okay, so right now, the width of this is a little bit thicker than the cuts here, right? So I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller until my width matches. So I think that kind of matches. And then watch, we're gonna do something like this. Um, here, there we go. And we're going to basically extend this cut, right? So I wanna move it up just a little bit. Okay, right around there. Um, let me duplicate this because we're gonna need to extend it right there. And even this, it's so little, right? It's such a small piece, but there is a curve, right? It's not straight. Okay, so I feel like it needs to be more like that. Cause I want this to look good. I wanna convince you that this is worth the effort, okay. So to me, I feel like that is a natural extension of this, of this curve, okay? So grab the two items and slice. And we're gonna get rid of our slice results. So we don't need this little glyph. We don't need this one. And we're gonna get rid of this purple one. So hmm, it needs to be a little bit thicker, but you see how like to me, that looks more natural than if we went straight out, right? And that kind of looks like it could be part of the outfit. It's such a small piece, I don't think anyone would notice. Now let's turn around and do this guy over here. And I'm going to flip horizontal to get it the other way. And then, Curve this up so it matches that line right about there, sort of. 
Let me move it down a little bit. And I could probably make this a little bit thicker. But okay, so let's grab these two items and slice. So let's remove these pieces. So I did a much better job on this one, on this side, I believe. Okay, let me get that little piece out of the way. And then you can delete all of this. So here is this piece, right? Now this is its own separate piece. So it's much better than having a seam because with this light color, you might see the seam, but when, with a natural break, you, you would just think that that's the way the file was, was drawn, right? Just like how, um, let's see, let me put it back over here. So you're not gonna notice that this piece is in two pieces when it's all together, right? So that looks really good. So she's going to be seamless. The only seams you're gonna see are at the edges in the black and it's gonna be away from everything. It's gonna be all the way at the edges where there are no colors sitting on top of it. So your eyes aren't drawn to it. She's gonna be 30 inches, so she's gonna be a good size next to your toddler, your kid. Um, and it's, she's gonna be glitter and pretty and all that good stuff. You're not gonna notice the seams. It's just gonna look amazing. Okay, but what do we do with this? So we're going to duplicate it because it's in two pieces, right? So we need two copies and go to contour and we're going to get rid of this piece and this piece. So we have our bottom piece. So our bo bottom piece is 8.8 .8 by 6.8. .8, so we can cut that with the Cricut. Now we want our contour, we want our top piece. So let's get rid of this, this, and this, and let's see how big our top piece is. 11.7 by 7.3. We can easily rotate this. Let's see if that's better. Nope, that should be better. 11.1 .1 by 9.5. So you can cut this with a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. All right, let's look at the rest of our pieces. Um, this little guy is so cute. What is this? Um, okay, so it's all connected. It's one piece. You can rotate this a little bit more and it will, it too will fit on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. So it's 11.51 by 11.2. So let me rotate it up just a little bit. 11.4 by 11.3. So you can cut that and that's going to look amazing and cute because it's seamless. And then here's our brown. Our brown, it's in two pieces, so we can separate those two pieces. Just duplicate, contour, and we don't want that little piece, so we have the big piece here. It's now 9.5 by 6.5, and this one, we want just the little, the little guy, and that is now 3.3 by 3.1. All right, let's look at the face. So here's the face, it's all one piece, so nothing to do there, but what I want you to do is I want you to duplicate it. And then on this one, I want you to go to contour and we're gonna hide all. The reason being is that there are some slits, right? I mean, some open space in the eyes, the eyebrows, the nose and the mouth. And while we have teeth going in there and stuff, there's still some black showing. So if there are going to be seams right here, you're not gonna see it because you're gonna cut this one, turn it into black, and what will happen is you're going to put this, the face, so I'm gonna set it to the front, you're gonna put it on top of this black piece, so any seams that would have been going through here will now be covered by that black piece, so you're not gonna see any seams in the middle. You're only gonna see seams at the edge if you're really, really looking, and you're not going to be because um, your guests will have no idea, right? So this looks amazing as well. So let's move this over here. So now we have just the white pieces. Um, it's a lot of white pieces. So I would probably slice this up into groups and not slice them up individually. So because it's 20.7 by 30, so you obviously you can't just cut it as is, but I would group the eyes together, maybe group this together and just deal with the fact that um, you have a little bit of wasted space, but to me it's not worth spending all that time to individually you know, slice it out. So let's slice out the eyes. And if you're going to be using white cardstock here, 
Um, I don't think it's an issue. I mean, if you don't want to waste your white glitter cardstock because it's not the most efficient, you know, cutting, I think that that's fine because if you use a pretty purple card, um, glitter cardstock here with a light one here and a bluish silver one, she's going to look so stinking cute. So it's going to be fine if you end up using white, regular white cardstock here. So I would break this up into groups like this. You know, it's kind of hard to see because it's um, so light on the screen to begin with. Get rid of your slice results. We don't need that. But so this is now moved out. So we went from having like a 30 inch by, I don't remember, 28 inches or whatever. Now we have just down to 17 inches by 17 almost. So we're getting closer to where we want to be. Um, so let's slice out this as a group. And let's see what we have left. Okay, so now we have a, a bundle of white here. And then this piece, is this better now? This is 13 by nine, so okay. We still have some work to do. Let's get that top part right here and grab these two items and slice. And I did it right over where my face is. So I'll move out of the way. <laughs> Get rid of the slice results. Don't need this. All right. So now we have the portion from, I believe, from the hat area. And then this piece is now 11.6 by 6.7. So we can rotate this a little bit. And that will now fit on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. So we are done with all of her. Now we just need to deal with this big 30 inch piece that we need to slice up, right? So um, I'm going to rotate this. Let me think about this. I'm gonna rotate this piece just a little bit. And the reason is because it was like this and it was saying it was 22 inch, 22.8 inches and I wanna make it 22 inches or less. So I'm gonna rotate it this way. All right, so it's 21 inches by 29.9, so it's perfect. Um, I'm gonna bring in a square, and I'm gonna build, we're gonna build the grid right now so that we can slice it up into puzzle pieces that the Cricut can cut, and then we'll piece it back together and then put all the colored pieces on top. So if you think about it, this black background is the only piece that's gonna have seams because everything else was seamless, right? So it's gonna look really good. Let's go to our square and make it 11 by 11. Technically, you can cut 11 and a half by 11 and a half, right? And if you remember what I just did right now, I, did, I don't like dealing with half inches because I feel like we're already doing so much. I don't wanna deal with the half inch. So I rotated this because 11 plus 11 is 22. I wanted my my width to be 22 or less, and it was at 22.5, which means I would have had to make the square 11 and a half inches, right? Because 11 plus 11 is only 22, and we were going past 22 inches. So that is why. So let's move this over here. It doesn't matter where, just kind of like in that realm. And then we're gonna go to the position feature and round to the nearest whole number. So 34.056 becomes 34, 3.2 becomes three. And basically what we're saying is, your X coordinate is the one running across. We're saying go over 34 units, go down three units, and here's the beginning of our square. We're gonna duplicate that square because it's already 11 inches, put it really close to the first one, and again, round to the nearest whole number. So 45.1 becomes 45, it's already at three. Now, you're gonna hit the shift key and go over here. This one's already selected. We wanna select this one as well. We want both squares. We're gonna duplicate them because they're already flushed with each other. Now we just wanna make both sets flushed with each other. So we're gonna put it really close to the first one and then go, this is already at 34, we're good. This we're gonna change to 14. So now we have four squares totally flushed, right? Duplicate again, because our set of squares is still highlighted. Put this down here, and 34 is good. 25.2 becomes 25. All right, now grab this guy and arrange, send to the front. 
We wanna make sure that everything is in and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see where the seams are going to be, okay? Uh, so let's see. Sometimes you can't help with how things are cut because that's just the way the image is. But where you, when you can help something, like right here, so it's gonna cut down here. I believe this piece is going to still be with this, but just to make sure, I'm gonna move it over just a little bit, but not too much, because I don't want this. I don't want this little tip to be sliced off, and then, first of all, it's teeny tiny. Two, I have to keep track of it to tape it back together. It's so hard to tape together a small piece. So you wanna make sure that when you're slicing your black background, that you're slicing big pieces, not teeny tiny pieces, okay? So I'm gonna move this back and I'm gonna move it over. I want it kind of just kissing the edge because I want this, I want this whole corner piece to be one big chunk, right? Then I want this piece to come down and I wanna make sure that this is part of that piece. So I'm gonna move this up a little bit. So that means this right here is all one piece. Then our next set, these are pretty big pieces. I think we're good. All right, so let's slice it and see how we did, okay? I'm gonna keep it zoomed in like this. Let's grab this and slice. And then grab this, oops, here and slice. Grab this, so we're just moving down and slicing. Grab, and don't worry about that little glitch. Slice, design space, it's glitchy. <laughs> it's okay, all right, let's grab this bottom one and slice. And then I'm gonna zoom out. We're gonna move the pieces so you can see what it looks like, okay? Um, so let's go back over here. Okay, so here are our pieces. Look, that's 10.9 by 10. It's all one piece, I love it. This is all one piece, love. See, it's connected right here. Um, okay, then this piece, See, these are big pieces. Um, I've seen a lot of videos, people do this differently. I prefer building my little grid because when you go to put this together, it's just like a e big, easy puzzle, right? These four corners all meet up. So it's easy to push them up against each other, tape it, and that's going to help you hide the seams because they're gonna be right up next to each other, right? So the only scene that you're gonna see here is gonna be this little piece because his hair goes over most of that, right? So let me arrange, send to the front. And I'm gonna rotate this because I think it's like this. So keep in mind that this is going to be right next to each other. So the seam that you're going to see is just this little one, but if you tape it well, and because it's so easy to match this up, you, you might not even see that seam, okay? So, and then these four go into a corner. And so it's really easy to put it back together, right? Everything lines up, and that's what you wanna do is you wanna make this project easy. You have a lot of moving parts, right? You have quite a few pieces of the background and then you have all your colored pieces the last thing you need is to make this even more complicated right so this is the most it, it may have a few more steps but it helps us align everything and in the end it makes it so much more um it just makes it worth it so let's grab up grab all this and delete that because we don't need the excess and we're done so let's go to the make it page to see what this looks like And she's gonna look so good. I can't tell you enough. Okay, um, at least one of your images is larger than 11.5. That's not a problem. Remember, we had to rotate some of these images to make it fit like within a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. So just click okay and move on. So this piece, you could rotate this a little bit, right? 
and now it fits in there. So this is our white and you can fit this up here probably somewhere. So it's a little bit more difficult to make pieces fit when they're attached to each other, right? But this is looking pretty efficient. So we have a few more pieces. Oh, this is, this is the piece that goes underneath the fin if you didn't want to do the polka dots. So in this case, we don't need it. I'm going to click on the three dots and just hide selected. All right, so we have a few more pieces to fit in. And I think you can fit all your white on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. Perfect. Oh, and actually we could probably move these, right? So click on the three dots, move object, and we're gonna move it on to the first page. Hopefully we can get it to fit in here pretty easily. Let's see, maybe right around here. Let's rotate this. Perfect. Put on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, all your white will cut. Here's your light purple. You can even move this in a little bit more if you wanted to. So I would wanna do something like this because most likely I would be using glitter cardstock and I find that I would probably even do something like this. because it's easier to use this big chunk of scrap paper for next time. Okay, so let's look at our black. Here's our big black background. Everything's looking good. This looks good. Um, so I'm almost wondering, let's see. I feel like this piece can fit on another page. So, Let's click on it, click on the three dots, move object, and we're gonna do some shuffling. So let's put it with this one. I don't know if it will fit as is. I don't think so. So I'm gonna put it like this. That will fit, but this piece needs to move. So click on this, move object, and let's see if I can fit it. Where can that fit easily? What piece is that? Um, I think I can fit it here. <laughs> Let's see. Um, and this is good practice because no, what was I thinking? Uh, kind of. Okay, let me. Let's move object. That was not a good fit. Um, let's see if we can fit it with this one. All right, so here's our piece. Let's rotate it. Okay. I think this will work. Move this over. <laughs> so we save one piece of black cardstock. All right, um, here's the face. The brown hair, I would probably move this up here like this so that next time I have a good chunk of scrap paper. Here is my hair and it's saying it's going, you know, to the edge of the 12 inches, right? So I would move it over, tilt it a little bit if you're really worried. But, um, there, that gives you a little bit more space, right? Don't worry that it's on a 12 by 24 piece of, um, 20, 12 by 24 mat. The system won't know. You just put it on a 12, you know, put your 12 by 12 cardstock on a 12 by 12 mat if you don't have the 12 by 24 and send it in. And even if it went all the way to the line, I would send a 12 by 12, 12 by 12 mat, put your paper all the way to the edge of the 12 and it would cut fine. Okay. Let's look at this piece. Okay, so this piece is kind of long. I would rotate this just to make sure that it fits. Cause I'm gonna assume you don't have 12 by 24 paper. I have some, but I don't have a lot and I don't really use it unless I have to. So I always assume that you guys don't have it. So you can, you know, you can make this super efficient. You can stick that in there. Let's see this guy. Um, I think this one needs to go on a different piece. Okay, 
So what I would do is click on this, move object, and we're actually going to say, let's do a new map. We want it to be the purple map, confirm. So it's gonna put it on a purple map for us. And let, I think this piece can fit. So let's try move object. I don't know, I might be crazy. I think it could fit here, but we'll see. Yay, <laughs> and it fits, hip hip hooray. All right, let's go back to this piece. This one, you know, you can move it in here. You can make, you can rotate this a little bit more so that maybe you have more usable space next time over here and you can move this guy. Maybe you can even move this guy here or actually up here. So next time, you would have space right here, like a little triangle corner that's easy to use, but this space right here will be more usable for next time. And that's it. Boo is gonna look amazing at 30 inches. She's going to be seamless. I'm gonna call it practically seamless because her seams are only gonna be in the black and just little, little pieces. And if you assemble it the way that I show you how to assemble, you're not gonna be able to really notice the seams. So, all right, fingers crossed. <laughs> Let me know your feedback, speed up, slow down. Did I miss anything? If you have further questions, please post it. And then that way I can address it in another video or I could just respond back to you. And if you have a special request, let me know as well, because this was a special request in itself. So it's Ann, A-N, at theuselesscrafter.com. If you need to send me something, I will see you next time. Bye.